On today's episode, I'm going to show you my Topaz Denoise AI Lightroom Batch Processing Workflow. Stay tuned. Hello everyone and welcome to the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. On a previous video, and I'll link that video in the description below, I explained how I do a single image edit using Topaz Denoise AI and Sharpen AI. I gave you that workflow video, but sometimes I want to batch out a bunch of uh, images at once. In that video, I explain why I don't use Topaz Denoise AI as a raw batch processor. So go back and watch that video if you haven't, and you'll understand why. Today's video is very important because denoising is one of the first things you want to do in your editing process. And I'm going to show you how you can batch process images from Topaz uh, Denoise AI using Lightroom. And it's really cool and it can really speed up your workflow. I'm not covering Sharpen AI today, but we'll save that for another video. But denoising is the first stop. Before we get started, uh, there's a sell on right now with Topaz Denoise AI. Today is June 2nd, uh, 2021. The sale runs till June 4th, so you have a couple few days left for this sale. It's regularly $79.99. You get it on sale for $59.99, and also the image quality bundle is on sale for $149.99. It's regularly $259.97. And if you click on my affiliate link in the description below and use my promo code David Kelly, that's all one word at checkout, you'll receive an additional 15% off. And if you already own some of the uh, image quality bundles, like say you own Gigapixel AI and Sharpen AI, you can still complete your uh, image quality bundle and get a good savings there as well. So check that out as well. But anyway, I just want you to know about this cell. There's some good savings here. Don't miss out. Now, let me show you how I batch process. Now, I'm in a, a folder of a bunch of different images here that I shot one day. And anyway... They're not all good images. In fact, there are maybe only a few good images and a whole bunch, but you know what? I take a lot of images in hopes of getting a good one somewhere along the way. But anyway, as you can see, I flagged the images that I thought I possibly could use. So I'm calling through the images and finding the ones that I think I could use. Uh, anything that's really not gonna be good at all, totally out of focus or something like that, I just get rid of it. If it's slightly out of focus, I can fix those problems in Sharpen AI. After I flagged my images, I come up here to attribute, click on that, and then I'll go here, see where it says flag. You have three different choices. You can go for flagged images, um, then you can go for filter based on flag status, any flag status or rejected images. I'm gonna click on my flagged images. Now it's gonna show me all my flagged images, the images I think I can possibly use. And then what I'll do is select them all and I'll just do command or control A to select them all. And then what I'll do is put those in a collection, which makes it easy where I can find them. So I'm just gonna go ahead and come to collections, click the plus here, go to create a collection, give it a name and make sure you have this checked on include selected photos and click create. And it'll throw all those images into a collection. I've already done that, so I'm just gonna click cancel. Now here I am in my collection of 18 photos. I just called this the noise uh, batch process workflow. 18 images in here. Now the next step I will do is come up here to um, metadata, click on metadata. And this is really nice because you have these different metadata fields you can use here, but I'm interested in this one right here, ISO speed. Now if you click right here, you have different choices that you can use like you know, camera serial number, lens, focal length, shutter speed. But I'm interested in ISO because remember, I'm doing denoising and noise is important to me here because I want to denoise and I want to know what uh, ISOs I shot at. So I'm going to check off uh, ISO speed. And you'll notice I have um, nine images at 2,500, uh, four images at 3,200, and five at 6,400. So I'm going to batch process these, not all at the same time, but I'm going to batch process them in groups like the ISO 2500 group, because I'll have the same setting for all those. It'll be really quick. You'll see that in a second here. And then I'll do the ISO 3200s and then the ISO 6400s. It's really fast. Now, these images will still live in their original folders, but they'll also be in this collection. So I'll be able to grab them really quick. And this makes it really fast and efficient. 
Right now we're seeing uh, the nine images that were shot at ISO 2500. If I click on 3200 here, you'll see those four images and 6400, ISO 6400, there are those images. But I want to go ahead and see all my images at once. So what I'm going to do is come here and click on none. And now here's all my flagged images inside of this collection. Now what I need to do is do a little uh, preliminary work on them. So I'm going to go to develop. What I need to do is select all these images at once because uh, I want to change them all at one time. So I'm going to hit Command or Control A to do that, depending if you're on a Mac or PC. Make sure you have Auto Sync uh, turned on here. And then I'll go ahead and open up the basic panel. The first thing I need to do is pick a camera profile. And so I'm going to click right here. And I'm just going to go to my matching uh, camera profiles. And I think I'll just pick, um, I think I'll just do Faithful here. Okay, and that'll apply that to all the images. I'm going to click close. I'm not going to do any adjustments here. Now, you could run auto adjustments if they were all pretty much the same, you know, same lighting conditions and so on and so forth. But I'm just going to not do any adjustments on them. I'll, I'll save that for later. Okay, but if you do any adjustments, do very light adjustments. Don't do any uh, presence adjustments like adding extra texture and things like that. That's not good, okay, because you don't want to increase that noise by adding extra texture. What I'll do next is come to uh, detail and I'll make sure my sharpening is shut off the whole way. And that'll update for all 18 images. It'll shut all the sharpness off. And as far as noise reduction, I'm going to leave that off at zero. I always leave my color noise on at 25. To me, I think that makes a lot of sense. And I, I explained that in my previous video why I do that. And then lens corrections, I always come here and make sure I have removed chromatic aberrations checked on and enable profile corrections checked on. And that takes care of all my images. And now I'm going to be ready for batch processing. So the next thing I want to do is go back to the library. And now I want to go back to metadata and I'm going to start with my ISO 2500 group. I'm just going to click on that and we'll get started from there. Now what I need to do first is select all of those images. Again, it's command or control A to select them all. And now I can right click on any of the images and go edit in and find Topaz Denoise AI. And we'll get this dialog box here. Now you're going to, you're going to want to edit a copy with Lightroom adjustments because we made some adjustments in, in the uh, develop module. I'm going to use file format of TIFF. It's a lossless file format. Very important. Uh, color space. I use the largest color space I can get, which is Profoto RGB. Now you can get away with uh, Adobe RGB as well if you prefer there. 16 bits. You have your choice between 8 or 16. I recommend 16. Resolution 300 is really a good one to default with. You can also use 240, 300. Th they'll all be fine. Uh, my Epson printer likes 360, so sometime if, sometimes if I know I want to print, I'll change it to 360 compression none I don't want to compress my image at all so then all I have to do is click edit and it'll prepare as you can see here it says preparing files it's turning all the DNGs into lossless TIFF files and then, then it will uh, open up uh, Topaz Denoise AI and in practically no time at all we'll have these nine images denoised and sent right back into Lightroom Okay, we're in Denoise AI. Now, this is very important. Uh, see where it says select all. Make sure you have this checked because we want to process these all the same. Now, remember, they're all at ISO 2500. So they're all going to take really pretty much the same noise reduction, okay? And they were all shot around the same time too in pretty similar lighting conditions, okay? I'm going to use standard because honestly, the standard model is pretty much your everyday model for basic ISOs. 2500 is not an extremely high ISO. It's, 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 it's high, but not super high. So standard's going to work. I'm going to run auto here. I'm going to click on auto. Automatically detects the recommended settings for this image. Now you'll notice here, it tells me you must preview image to determine auto settings. So I'm not going to do that, and I'll explain why in a second. But if I wanted to check each one of these individually, I'd have to click on them one at a time. But I don't really have a need for that because I'm going to change this image a little bit, and, and you'll see here in a sec. And whatever I do to this one image, it's going to be great for all of them, okay? So I'm zoomed in to 100% here. The auto setting is at a 4 for noise reduction, enhanced sharpness at 49. I'm going to use that enhance sharpness at 49. It's a basic uh, sharpening. It's not an overboard sharpening. Like, see, this image would probably need to go 
also into Sharpen AI because it's slightly out of focus. Some of them wouldn't need uh, Sharpen AI, but this one would. What I'm going to do is like do some pixel peep and go around it and make sure there's no noise lurking anywhere. This is important that you check, especially around like the flowers, okay? Like around the edges of things, like in these edges right in here, very important to make sure that there's no noise living. And here's a little tip. I always increase the noise, remove noise a little bit to the right. It's at four. I'm going to, I'm going to bump it up to around like a 10. Okay. And that will just assure that I have no noise living in here. Okay. And that's going to be fine for all the images already. And uh, as far as recover uh, original detail, I'm going to leave that shut off because I don't really find a need that I ever have to use that too often. And the color noise reduction, remember, I used the default setting of 25 in Lightroom, so I have no color noise in this image. And Lightroom does a really good job of getting rid of color noise. And that just really saves me time once I'm here in Denoise AI, okay? So they're all set. Now, you'll notice all their settings are set the same here, okay? Like uh, noise reduction of 10, uh, sharpness of 49, and no uh, recover original detail, and no color noise reduction, okay? They're all set. Now, all I need to do is click apply. They'll batch process out, and we'll be right back in Lightroom. I'll go ahead and click apply and we'll let this run and we'll let this run in real time. We'll see how long it takes for each one of these images. Five seconds for the first. I think they're all going to be around five seconds. And remember, how many images are there? Nine. It says processing three of nine right now. So it's going to go ahead and process these. And this is a really great way of doing it. Uh, it eliminates any kind of issues you're going to have with uh, batch processing raw files in Denoise AI, like, you know, where you don't get the camera profiles and things like that. But I explained that in my other video, why I do it this way. But you can still batch process and you can do it in Lightroom. And you still have your original raw files intact, which is really nice as well. So I like that. So it's running along here, zipping along. I could sing you a song if you'd like, but you probably wouldn't like that. The dogs would start barking. But anyway, we're almost done here. And in just a second, we'll be back in Lightroom. And we are back in Lightroom. Now, let me go ahead and do just a little bit of pixel peeping here. I'm just going to use this XY comparison here. I'm going to zoom into 300%. And remember, I told you noise really can live around these edges here if you're not careful in uh, Denoise AI. So you want to make sure you get the right noise reduction. So, you know, zoom in in Denoise AI and make sure you have no noise anywhere. And compare the image on the right, which is the original RAW file, to the image on the left. The noise is totally removed. And as we move around the image, you can see there's no noise lurking anywhere. So job is done. That's super easy to do. Let me get out of this mode here. All right. Now, if you wanted to go ahead and batch process the rest of the images, I can just go ahead and type my shortcut of G to see all my images on the screen again. And I'm still in the ISO 2500 category. So if I wanted to do the ISO 3200 next, I'll just click on that. And there's my four images. And then repeat that process. And then once they come back in, you can go and click on your ISO 6400. Repeat that process. And you are good to go. Well, there it is. That's my batch processing uh, workflow using uh, Lightroom. My preferred way of doing batch processing with Topaz Denoise AI. I love Topaz Denoise AI. I mean, I, you, can't, you can't beat it. It is just fantastic. If you enjoyed this tutorial today, please give it a like, share it with your friends. If you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe, click that bell notification icon. Then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it. And don't forget, Denoise AI is on sale for a couple more days. Take advantage of that. And I make a small commission when you do that and uh, helps me to keep making these videos and keep them coming your way. And I thank you in advance if you use my affiliate link. Well, I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. And I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.